As many of us regret gorging on chocolate for days, Christians spend the Easter week in reflecting on the death of Jesus and his resurrection. In many Orthodox and Catholic countries, an effigy of Judas is burned as part of the Easter rituals, a custom that continued in Liverpool until as late as the mid-20th century. And Judas' bad rap doesn't just extend to religious ritual, it has also become an insult in contemporary culture. While the name Judas may be synonymous with the most heinous of traitors, Katie Edwards from the University of Sheffield suggests it may be time to readdress the claims in an article for the conversation. Judas Iscariot was, according to the New Testament, one of the twelve original disciples of Jesus. He is known for the kiss and betrayal of Jesus to the Sanhedrin for thirty silver coins which ultimately led to Jesus being nailed to the cross. As part of their Easter religious programming, on Good Friday the BBC in the UK aired In the Footsteps of Judas, a documentary focusing on Iscariot. Presented by vicar Rev. Kate Bodley, the program promised to reopen the case against the Bible's most notorious villain The Catholic Herald has already taken exception to the documentary, stating that a perfectly good word exists in the English language for Judas' actions, evil. But the Bishop of Leeds, Rev. Nick Baines, proves far more sympathetic to the biblical villain. I feel a bit sorry for Judas, he said. He has gone down in history as the ultimate traitor who sells his friend for a few quid. Whether he is a traitor or a scapegoat he has had a lousy press. The BBC documentary isn't the first attempt to rehabilitate Judas. The tide's been slowly turning for Iscariot since the 1960s with the English-language publication of Nikos Kazantzakis' controversial novel The Last Temptation of Christ and the subsequent filmic portrayals of Judas as less archetypal evil villain and more complex political figure and friend of Jesus. The discovery of the Gospel of Judas in the 1970s was a further move towards reimagining the character. The Gospel offers a much more sympathetic character, a favored apostle to whom Jesus says, you will be cursed by the other generations, and you will come to rule over them. Despite the centuries of denunciation, the biblical text itself is more ambiguous than we might expect to. It isn't clear if Judas is a thief who betrays Jesus or if he is a true disciple, who is a central agent in the fulfillment of God's plan and does the dirty work that the other disciples won't do. The Gospels can't help us to reach a decision because, as with many biblical stories and characters, their evidence is conflicting and often contradictory. Matthew 26 47-56, for example, suggests that Judas is fulfilling a necessary duty. Jesus says to him, Do what you came for, friend, 2650. Indeed, none of the apostles are presented in a heroic light in the text since they all desert Jesus, 2656. Most of the Gospels suggest Judas' betrayal is essential to the fulfillment of God's plan, John 13 18, John 17 12, Matthew 26 23 to 25, Luke 22 21 to 22, Matt 27 9 to 10, Acts 1 16, Acts 1 20. The Gospel of John also suggests that Jesus knows of Judas's betrayal and allows it, John 6 64 and 13 27 to 28, but, far less sympathetically, that Judas also was a liar and a thief, 12 1 to 6. In Mark, 14.10-11, meanwhile, it isn't clear that money is a motivation for his betrayal of Jesus, while the Gospels of Luke and John both agree that Judas betrays Jesus because Satan enters into him, suggesting perhaps that Judas may not have been acting of his own free will, Luke 22.3-6. John 13.27 While Judas may never be fully rehabilitated from his reputation as treacherous villain, perhaps we could cut him a little slack. If the Bible isn't clear on his character, then how can we?